What's up everybody, it's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Welcome to another video. So look, a couple of weeks ago, I released a post on my YouTube community page where I shared with you a new auction deal that I picked up online. Now in today's video, what I wanna do is share a couple of tips with you that you wanna keep in mind when you're looking to purchase these auction types of deals in order to be able to prevent overpaying for these properties and also making sure you got yourself a good deal. Now the auction house is right behind me and we're gonna talk about it. Let's get into it right now. All right, everybody, so the first thing that you wanna keep in mind when it comes to these auction types of deals, just remember you can't get inside these houses, right, until you actually close on the house. So most auction companies are not gonna let you into the property and you don't wanna trespass on the property as well, right? So there's a couple of things that I do which you know you, you you can take with a grain of salt and i am going to show it to you in this video in order to really be able to get an idea of how much work the property needs because i want to make sure i'm not overpaying for the house so the first thing i do is i look at the neighborhood that the property is in you can see i'm standing on the street where the property is located at this is a very very nice neighborhood and we'll show you uh, maybe a clip of the entrance of the neighborhood as well so over there is kind of like a golf course community. And you know, while you're driving through the area, you just want to get a glimpse of what the neighborhood is like. So this isn't like a, a bad area by any stretch of the word. It's actually a really nice area and it's close to downtown Thomasville. Another thing I do when I'm going through the neighborhood is I'll search for properties just like this one across the street. So my the property I won the auction, uh, won at the auction is right there across the street. Here's another property literally across the street from that property. Now on that property, there's a, there's a note from the city, from the, code, uh, the code's office. This house has code violations. First thing I'm doing is I'm gonna go take a snapshot of that letter from the code's office. I'm gonna take a picture of the property I'm gonna take a, a picture of the mailbox as well so I can make sure I have the property address. And then I'm simply gonna contact the owner. That could be a two for one deal just because I drove around the neighborhood. So number one, what does the neighborhood look like? And number two, are there any other deals available in the neighborhood that are in distress as well? So that's how you maximize your time. That's how you maximize your profits on every deal that you do. Let's go over to the house. The next thing I'm paying attention to is the property itself, right? So I've done videos like this in the past where I've shown you guys how to walk the exterior of the property and the interior just to kind of get an idea of how much work the property needs. But first thing I'm noticing is the roof, right? So that roof, I'm definitely going to have to replace it. You can tell it's an older roof. Uh, there may be some repair issues on the peak of the roof as well, so we might have to get that looked at. I know that that's gonna cost me somewhere between five and $8,000 just to get it fixed. I might be able to get a better deal um, because my team, you know, with my team, I provide them with so much work that, you know, I get better pricing. I get wholesale deals with them, but for the average person, you know, you can estimate somewhere between five to $10,000 for something like that, depending on how bad the damage is. The next thing I'm doing is I'm looking at the windows. Right, so as I'm looking at the windows, I'm looking at how old the windows are. And then I'm going around the house and I'm counting every single window because generally, especially if I'm gonna flip this property, if I'm gonna fix and flip it, I'm more than likely gonna replace these windows because they're old. Um, if they're not that bad, I might keep them. But if I'm gonna fix to rent the property, you know, these, pro these windows aren't terrible for those, uh, those types of conditions. So I'm going around the property I'm uh, gonna check out all of the windows, count them, and add that to my budget. Generally, you'll be around $400 to $450 per window installed, all right? After that, I'm looking at the foundation of the property. Let's walk around the house. Now, this property has a nice long driveway. This is definitely gonna be a fix and flip for me, considering I don't get that property across the street. If I get that property across the street, it may benefit me to hold both, both of these properties. They're building up uh, downtown. They're changing the environment of downtown Lexington and downtown Thomasville. They're trying to make it more, uh, 
uh, tourist friendly, right? So um, it may be a good time. This is so close to downtown Thomasville, it may make sense for me to hold on to these properties long term, maybe even short term rental these properties. I'm not, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm just noticing the driveway. There's a ton of cracks in it. I might get this checked out. If I flip it, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to do anything to the driveway. Just get it cleaned up, right? Maybe pressure wash, make sure there aren't any trip hazards or anything like that. But I'm not going to redo the whole driveway just because. The new owner can take care of that, and I'll adjust the price accordingly. But looking at the foundation here on this property, the way that I check out the foundation is by looking at the walls, right? So you can notice there's some cracks in the bricks right here. Generally, these cracks came from the house settling, right? I definitely want to get this wall checked out to make sure that there's nothing going on there because some of those bricks are popping out. But I don't think that that's going to be a major issue, to be honest with you. Generally, when you see cracks going up the side of the wall and they're larger than your, the size of your finger, that's when you really want to uh, pay attention to the, to the foundation of the property uh, because that means that something is going on. Those are not, not even near the size of my finger. Those are more hairline, a little larger than hairline cracks. Um, so I don't think that that's going to be a major issue as well. But I would do that same exact thing around the whole property just to make sure that the foundation on the property is okay without me having to get in. Now, obviously, we do more foundation tests when we get inside the property, but I don't own this property yet, so I technically can't get in it, all right? Next thing I do is I'll check out the HVAC unit. You can see this one is actually a clean unit, but I think it's kind of small. So um, I am gonna have to replace this because the unit is so small. So um, not gonna not gonna use that one simply. I think this is probably the AC unit for like half of the house or something like that. That thing is tiny. Um, another thing I'm looking at is the, the electric box. I don't know, I've never seen an electric box like this and I've, I bought a lot of houses. Never seen an electric box that wasn't connected to the electric line. So I don't know how they have the electric hooked up in the inside, but I'm sure I'm gonna have to do some electric work on this property as well. There was a huge tree right here. Um, you can see that the grass is starting to grow. It wasn't like this the other day, but um, there's a huge tree right here that was cut down. We're probably gonna get that removed. I got my tree guy. That'll probably cost me a couple hundred bucks to get, get rid of that. And if we step over here, the next thing I'm looking at is the back of the house, right? So what's wrong with the back of the house? What's wrong with the gutters? What's wrong with all of this stuff that we potentially have to replace? That's what I'm looking at overall. And um, you know, I'm looking at the roof line and I'm looking at all of this other stuff just to make sure everything is intact. So as of right now, just looking at this, I know for a fact I gotta redo the roof and possibly the gutters and things like that. I know that the bank repaired some of the roof, some of the, uh, to prevent water damage. They, they, uh, they replaced some of the soffit up there. They replaced some of the, some of the gutters because when I first came by this property, um, all of that was damaged. So they did a little bit of work up there in order to be able to prevent uh, more water damage, uh, which you know, I, I definitely appreciate, but I'm probably gonna get up there and have that replaced anyway. Um, but you know, long, you know, basically these are things that you, that you want to be looking out for when you're, um, walking around this property. Now, another thing that you want to keep in mind is here's access for a dog, right? Now, look, I'm not telling anybody to trespass and go inside the property by any means, right? But if this thing is open, I know of some people who might crawl through that thing or at least stick their arm in just to unlock the door. I'm not telling you to do that, but if you really wanted to see the inside, you know, that's easy access. But a lot of times this thing is locked anyway, so you're not gonna be able to get in, all right? Um, but what you can do is look in through the windows to see what the real condition of the property is. So that's what I choose to do. I look 
in through the windows. I look in through the front windows, through the back windows. Again, just kind of getting a general idea of what the property actually needs. Yeah, so we got back in the car. Um, just gonna drive around a little bit just to kind of show you guys the neighborhood as I, as I was uh, mentioning earlier. You know, the first clip, you know, I, we, we spoke about just kind of getting familiar with the neighborhood and also um, looking for other deals in the neighborhood. I showed you an example of how to do that, but that's kind of what you want to be doing, right? You want to make sure that you're uh, getting familiar with the neighborhood. It's a really nice neighborhood, tree-lined blocks all through the place, man. The thing is, this thing is really nice. You got some new construction going on right here. Um, that's huge. Whenever you see new houses being built in the area, uh, that's, that's a major plus because you know that there is money coming to the area as well. Um, you got some, you got a multi-unit. It actually looks like a pretty nice multi-unit, but this looks like a, a historic um, neighborhood, right? It looks like a historic neighborhood close to downtown Thomasville. I love the neighborhood. I think is a, the investment that I made, which was $118,099 was a good one. It was actually a great one. The house, I think this house is going to go for at least 250 to 275. Um, it's going to drive around over here so you can see the entrance. But check out this entrance right here. It's called Mills Home, right? Check out this entrance. Really nice entrance into the community. And, um, you know, yeah, it's just a, a really nice neighborhood. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. You know, at the end of the day, when it comes to these auction types of deals, you can't get in to the properties. The best you can do is get familiar with the property. If you're doing this online, maybe you'll have some boots on ground. This property is only 25 minutes from where I live. So, you know, for me, it takes nothing for me to just go ahead and drive out to the property, get familiar with the area and make sure that I'm making a good investment. Ideally, you want to do this before you actually make your offer on the property. I did it because I'm a little bit more of a risk taker. I did it, um, you know, I drove around after I solidified my offer. And, uh, and I drove around with my, my, with my realtor, Casey, and uh, you guys met her on the channel before as well. And uh, we, we both came to the same conclusion that this is a really, really good investment and a really good opportunity to make some money on this house. Let me know what you guys would do with this property. Would you Airbnb it based on what you're looking at, you know, with the area, um, based on the neighborhood, based on the property? The street is really nice. Obviously, we haven't gotten inside, haven't shown you guys inside the property just yet. But once I get into the property, do you guys want me to show you the inside? Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about that. And also let me know what else you want me to cover on this particular deal. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for an auction course, um, considering it. So we'll, uh, you know, maybe that'll come in the future. I'll let you guys know about that. But uh, overall, you know, I just want to show you guys how I do things in the trenches. Um, I do deals every single day. Uh, I'm in the. Uh, uh, I'm in the trenches every single day. Um, I'm doing business all the time. And I just want to share this journey with you guys. Not only am I doing business, obviously my clients are doing business, my coaching clients as well. Um, and, you know, uh, if, if you want to uh, look into that, you want to pursue something like that, be sure to check out uh, reieducationacademy.com slash coaching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell. I'm going to see y'all on the next one.